It was space fever. Forget new cars, second kids, colored televisions, the perfect barbecue, and expensive vacations. Space missions with a new high for the country. By now there had been orbits of the Earth and landings on the moon. But we wanted more. We didn't know anything of the real fever down here. The new mission was placed in the biggest ship, filled with the most famous astronauts, and was going to be out in space for a record amount of time. The men were to fully explore, measure, chart, and claim the unknown for us. It would be a rigorous test for the men. Our astronauts covered an immense distance quickly. The further away from ground control they got, the less they looked back to Earth for guidance. Their transmissions to the space agency weakened and got less frequent. Silence filled the control room for days at a time. The scientists said they went too far too fast. The doctors said the astronauts were pushing their bodies beyond their physical limits. The psychiatrist said they got sick from all the emptiness out there. The space agency tried to get the astronauts to come back. The fervor of the early days of the mission started to wane. And then the instruments showed that our boys were coming home. The ship returned. The smoke cleared. The doors opened. But only a few of our astronauts had come back. Somewhere along the way, our astronauts had been lost. The ship was locked and searched for clues. The returning astronauts were examined. They told the story of their missing shipmates. Weeks into the mission, a hum appeared that gradually turned into a song. A sweet song. Many of the men aboard couldn't resist the tune. The affected men started losing touch with the goals of the mission. It became less about gaining control of space and more about losing themselves to the song that sounded like emptiness. The men on the ship started to refer to this condition as the drift. This explanation didn't please the space agency. They wouldn't believe a song could make their astronauts turn their backs on a national mission. The space agency sent satellites out into space to track down the men. The satellites pushed further and further out. They never found the men, but they did find the song. It was transmitted back to satellite dishes all over Earth. Special broadcasts were played for the country in an effort to reconnect with our men lost in space. The 
song became very popular. It was a hit. Everyone started to tune in. Bootleg recordings of transmissions were played on CB radio and passed around parties and happenings. Bands started covering and expanding on the song. A hypnotic effect took hold of the bodies listening. The drift had been brought home from space. As soon as the mistake was noticed, the song was banned on the ground. All frequencies were jammed. The government shut down all sound broadcasts and tore down satellite dishes. But it was too late. Even though the song had been contained, the drift was free. Those affected became known as drifters and continued to drift for years in isolated and avoided communities. We were told to look away from the drifters and eventually to look away from the sky. We focused on our manicured lawns, Sunday sports, fondue parties, and local parades. The space missions were redirected and became less about majestic gestures and more about practical goals. We were satisfied with Earth orbits and moon landings again. We stayed away from dreams that were beyond our reach. <laughs> 